potassium picrate, somebody discovered that it makes a noise when you put it into a firework. And I'll attempt to show you just a little tiny bit of what it does. And so that was very popular for quite a long time in fireworks. But lead picrate is also quite dangerous because there's a story in the history books of a factory that had barrels of picric acid stored for a long time by lead pipes, water pipes, and the picric acid was getting on the lead pipes and it was gradually converting it into lead picrate. Somebody went and moved the barrel, exploded the lead picrate, which is very sensitive to being, you know, impact or friction, and blew the whole place up, destroyed everything. So this is, again, knowledge is very important in this kind of thing. So let me show you an example now, uh, I hope it behaves itself, of a picric acid whistle. And um, you'll notice that it's quite short because if I used a lot of it, you'd all be tasting it. And uh, that's not very good. So here we go. It helps to put it in the tube the right way up. <laughs> Often happens with fireworks, doesn't it? Really? So here we go. Oh, it'll go. You see how it produces this thick black smoke and this tiny little whistle, which is quite different from what we use now. All these whistling fireworks that you hear are actually chemicals that are burning. And what's really happening is that you've got a kind of reaction taking place at the bottom of a tube where the burning's taking place. And this, in the molten state, it is in fact giving a kind of a strobotic motion, really, stopping and starting. And so basically, if I can find some, we'll take two examples of this. And here's the first one. But all the chemicals that are used are related. So if you think of the structure, for those of you who are chemists, of picric, potassium picrate, picric acid, move over to benzoates or salicylates, and they will do the same thing. And the Chinese, who have been using potassium hydrogen, hydrogen terephthalate for making tires, also started using it for making whistles. So here's number one. Now it's interesting because what's happening is that most of that reaction is taking at the bottom of this tube and this empty tube here is acting as a resonator like an organ pipe. You know when you have an organ pipe performing you've got a column of air which is vibrating uh, but the, it's been caused at the bottom of the tube and it's the same here and the, you can in fact make long tubes and different sounds but I can assure you, we have tried on occasions to play a tune with it, and you can't fine tune it. Uh, <laughs> so here we go. Now, a Turkish pharmacist, who I've known for many years, played around with these things in a very big way. And um, he changed these so that he makes them burn so quickly that they don't really know what to do with themselves. And uh, it really is quite a different noise. So you can see that there is quite a difference there. And that's because you've speeded up the burning speed so fast by making a, a, a hollow down the middle of the composition that it doesn't know whether to whistle or to bang. That's really what's going on there. So that really is quite a unique speed. Very good uh, for scaring birds in airports. Uh, very handy.